Hello guys and welcome to this new video. You have been requesting a 3D composing tutorial for a while now. So I decided to reach out to my good buddy Zeke Faust who was kind enough to let me use one of his renders to play in a tutorial. I'm going to leave a couple of links in the description where you can uh, find Zeke's stuff. So please go and check that out, follow him on Instagram, uh, show him some love, he's truly awesome. Alright, so before getting started, what I want to do is to go into the Fusion Preferences and for the uh, current composition in the frame format, I want to uh, be sure that I'm working at least at 16-bit float. I'm going to work at 32-bit float though, just because I'm going to show you a lot of tech passes, most of which needs to be computed at 32-bit float, and it's just easier for me to uh, not have to keep track of everything. So as you can see, I already have uh, loaded a few things in my comp. I have the render. As you can see, the render is uh, linear. I only use an sRGB LUT on my viewer. Uh, then I also have a, an estima I'm going to show you later. And I also have a camera that's uh, been rendered out as an Alembic and it's, this is going to be greatly useful later. All right, before getting started, I want to point out something. Uh, this is a cycles render. All the operations that I'm going to show you are strictly related with how Cycles works. If you're using a different render, Redshift, Arnold, Octane, Renderman, whatever, the concept is pretty much the same, but the operation and the order of operation could be different. So keep that in mind, and if you need to, just do a Google search and you'll be fine. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to select my loader node. And as you can see in the format tab of my loader node, I have this channels tab. And in these drop down menus, I can see all of the AOVs that I have available in this render. So this is the main difference between Fusion and Nuke. In Nuke, you will have access to all of these AOVs uh, at any time in your flow. In Fusion, you basically have a fixed uh, channel structure and all of these channels are meant to be used only for what they have been designed for. So, for example, if you have uh, this uh, diffuse color uh, pass here, you would have to bring that into the RGB uh, channels and you'd have to do it manually. Uh, luckily, we have access to a script on Reactor, which is called the Split EXR Ultra. And what that does is basically, uh, it creates a loader node for each of the passes that we have available in our render. And it will bring those passes into the RGB world. Let's grab the AOVs, uh, we can take the diffuse uh, component here, then we have the glossy component as well. Let's set uh, that aside, then we have the transmission and the emission. Uh, then we want to look for the volume combined and we can get rid of these three, uh, noisy image, volume direct and volume indirect. Let's get rid of those. We don't need the beauty combined as well. We don't need the beauty noisy image. I don't think this ambient occlusion has been used in the render. So I'm going to set this aside. So right, uh, then let's grab the tech passes. We have a depth pass, a mist pass, a normal pass, position pass, and UVs. And we also have cryptomat. So how do we go from the diffuse color, direct and indirect, glossy color, direct and indirect, and transmission color, direct and indirect to this? Um, all right, so it's not very complex at all. So you all, all you have to do is to grab these three components here and you want to add a channel booleans and you want to pipe in the indirect and direct component and add them together doing nothing in the alpha in this case. And this is the result. Then you want to add another channel booleans 
uh, pipe in the um, direct and indirect added together and basically you want to multiply those by the color and do nothing in the alpha and as you can see we have successfully recreated the diffuse component of the image uh, then well all that we have to do is to basically uh, do the same thing again so we can just basically copy those channel booleans pipe the glossy direct indirect together so that they are added and multiply by the color and as you can see we have successfully recreated the glossy component and let's do the same also for the transmission let's pipe everything in and as you can see we have our transmission pass right so all that's left to do now is to add another channel booleans pipe in the diffuse and the glossy and add them together doing nothing in the alpha Let's copy these channel booleans and do the same thing for the transmission and copy these channel booleans and do the same thing for the emission pass. And as you can see, we have successfully recreated our beauty. I mean, it's 99% there. The only difference, for example, in, in here that you can see is you know uh, the beauty reconstruction doesn't have uh, denoising luckily we can use the Odin denoiser plugin which is available on reactor to basically have a very similar result i'm just you know denoising the whole thing right now just for the sake of speed but you would uh, you could need to add one denoiser after each of the passes to, to get a better result but anyway as you can see we have a you know pretty much it's not exactly exactly the same but it's a pretty good result nonetheless all right I'm going to get rid of uh, this denoiser just for the sake of speed and let's uh, have a look at this volume uh, pass as well as you can see this is our volume and if we look at the alpha we do have an alpha so all that we have to do in this case is just to merge that volume on top of uh, on top of our beauty so let's copy this here as well so that we have also a proper beauty as it was intended to be out of blender all right so for example let's say that i want to change the color of the uh, diffuse channel a little bit what I can do is to add a color corrector and I can for example let's go here sorry I can for example uh, change the gamma a little bit just to have it a little bit more moody I would say and we can also change the tint so that's a little bit cooler and as you can see we already have a very big difference I would say just with one color corrector uh, there's also uh, another way of doing this exact same thing and let me show you that what I can do is to for example grab this diffuse component and I can use this beauty and the channel booleans and basically subtract and do nothing in the alpha so the result is going to be my glossy plus the transmission plus the emission so i can for example copy this color corrector pipe that in after my diffuse component and i can use another channel booleans and basically i can add that up again and as you can see I have the exact same result so if uh, if I do have the time and uh, the need I would go for this route probably most of the time but I find increasingly uh, useful and uh, a smart way to work to use this subtractive method uh, just keep in mind that you have to uh, sandwich your edits between a subtraction and a sum 
uh, again keep in mind that uh, with different renders than cycles uh, the order of operation could matter and uh, in this case it doesn't because all of these are you know we are just adding things together and as you can and as you know uh, this operation is commutative so it doesn't really make any difference all right i hope that this glance at the uh, subtractive method is enough to get you started but let's go back to our classic let's call it classic way of working all right, so um, let's make some space here and let's have a look at our tag passes. Sometimes the EXR Splitter Ultra uh, messes things a little bit. So, for example, if I go into my Mist uh, Pass and I go into the Format tab, as you can see, I have the Mist in the blue channel and I do prefer to have it in my uh, red channel and where is it missed and in the depth channel is most likely the same so yes i'm going to place my depth in the red channel as well then let's have a look at the uvs and as you can see this script didn't get it right uh, again so we don't need the uv alpha i would say all that we need is the u channel to live in the red uh, channel and the v to live in the green channel and that's a correct looking uh, uv pass then we have a beauty normal and a beauty position and those both look correct uh, there's just one thing that we have to deal with with those two channels and that's the fact that uh, blender uses a different uh, coordinate system than fusion uh, and that would mean that blender uses z up and the y axis is inverted and on the contrary fusion is y up and uh, yeah you would have to swap a few channels so um, let's do that there's a node in Nuke called Position to Points and it creates a point cloud that helps you understand where things are in space. So in Fusion we doesn't have that specific node but we can do the same thing using particles. So let's use a particle image emitter and let's pipe in the position pass and we also need a particle renderer otherwise we're not going to be able to see anything instead of piping in the position channel with a wireless node i can pipe in the beauty so let's do that let's make some room here as you can see we have this plane that's made out of point particles right now we have one particle for each pixel let me do just one more thing before anything. In the global option, we want to enable an sRGB buffer LUT so that we better see our image in the 3D space. In the P image emitter, I want to change the density to 0.2, I would say, for both the X and the Y. And since points are not very visible, I can change the style to N-Gun and select the circle right there and i want to change the size i don't need those to be that big so what i would need now is a p custom tool and what i have to do is to basically go into the particle settings and type in this expression here if i grab my position pass i would need a channel booleans and what I can do is go enable the AUX channels and I can select the red, green and blue channel respectively for the X, Y and Z position. If I view that, uh, as you can see, we now have a position channel right there. What I can do is to just pipe into the P custom tool 
and we have successfully recreated a point cloud. So as you can see, our scene is facing the wrong direction. So what we can do now is to add a custom tool. And in the custom tool, I can go into the channel tab and all I have to do is to swap the green channel for the blue channel. And I can, and I have to swap the blue channel for the inverted green channel. And as you can see, we now have a properly oriented scene. This position to point is also very useful if you have to place things in the 3D space. I don't know, for example, you have smoke texture on cards or stuff like that that you want to place correctly. This is going to be very helpful. All right, enough for this. I am going to set that aside and remove the buffer lat and let's go back to our channels. Yeah, we have to copy this custom tool also to our normals. Okay, so let's grab those two and add a channel booleans. And we want to uh, keep the operation to copy, do nothing in the, the RGBA. Let me do one copy of this so that I can use it for the position pass as well. Then I want to go into the uh, extra channel, enable the extra channel, and in the normals I want to pipe in the red foreground in the X, green in the Y, and blue in the Z normals. Now I have to pipe in my normals, and as you can see now in the channels I do have my normals. So let's do the same for the position pass. Let's move and enable the extra channels. And here we have the position. Red for X, green for Y, and blue for Z. And if we look there, we successfully have added normals and position. There is uh, something that I want to point out about these normal pass. As you can see, we have none values on both the red channel and the blue channel. None pixels are errors that can happen in, in 3D rendering. None stands for not a number. Those pixels could cause very uh, annoying issues uh, in, in your flow. So we have to deal with that. I can add another custom tool. And what I want to do in the channels is to basically type in this expression in all of the channels. And I want to change this to, let's say, zero, I would say. Yeah. All right, so th that pixel is no longer a non pixel. Okay, so what can we do now that we have a normal pass and the position pass piped in? So the first thing that comes to mind is to use the volume mask and the shader node to do some relighting. Uh, I'm not going to do the same thing that I have shown before in this tutorial up here. Uh, so uh, let's do that. Let's add a volume mask. And let's also add a shader node. Let's have a look at the volume mask. As you can see, we have this shape here, which is the volume mask. I prefer using the sphere, to be honest. Then we can uh, pick to place our volume mask. So that's exactly what I want it to look like. And I want to move into the color tab and I want to turn on mask only. In the shader node, I want to bring the ambient and diffuse to zero and just work with the specular. Maybe I want to, you know, uh, make this a little bit more smooth. All right, so all I want to do now is to change the equator angle and my polar height. Yeah, I think something like that is pretty much what I need. Okay, so let's create a bitmap node and I want to pipe that after my volume mask and everything is looking correct because the volume mask is outputting an alpha channel i want to copy that bitmap and connect that to the shader but in this case i can see anything uh, that's because the shader node is not in the alpha 
all I have to do in the, bit, in the bitmap node now is to change the channel to luminance. So now what we have to do is to connect the two bitmap together and in this one what I want to do is to set the paint mode to multiply. And right now what I can do is to add a color corrector and place that in the flow and use that bitmap as a mask. So for example I can increase the gain of my uh, color corrector and maybe change the color to be a little bit warmer just like if this is casting some light on those two boxes and that's pretty much it. Uh, remember that you can do this same thing uh, whatever you want in the scene. Let's do something else using the shader node again so in this case what I want to do is again a little bit different I don't want to use the specular at all and I don't want to see the ambient right now all I want to do is to work with the diffuse so all I have to do is to change my equator angle right now and also I want to change my polar height and what I want to do is, is to you know concentrate the attention uh, around here changing the light position into something like that then what I want to do is to bring back some of the ambient light and I would say that's pretty much what I need one thing that I want would want to change maybe is to go back in here in my transmission channel and I want to add maybe a color corrector and I would want to change the gain a little bit so that the exterior doesn't look as bright. Right, that's pretty much it. And let me also add a color corrector right after my shader node. And I can, you know, again, change the gamma a little bit. Something like that. And I want the saturation up a, a touch maybe a little bit more gain as well let's see with the volume and let's see the before and after uh, let's make this a little bit more like so yeah that's it so let's see the before and after so as you can see the extent of modification that you can do in compositing without the need of re-rendering is pretty wild let's say that i want to add a little bit more volume in here fusion has this awesome tool called the volume fog and that's what i'm going to be using okay so let's add a wireless node and i want to grab this uh, position pass and what I want to do is to add another channel booleans and I want to keep everything as is and I want to enable the extra channels using the red in the X position green in the Y and blue in the Z so again we do have a position pass and now uh, I want to uh, grab another wireless node 3d this time and I want to link my uh, camera right there so what I have to do in order to use the volume fog is to pipe in my camera and my position pass so in the volume fog I, I then want to go into the color tab and check fog only so now I can merge that one on top of my image and let's you know let's try and do something nice in here I want to change to sphere and I want to change my size and soft edge I would probably want to change the scale as well something more like so and I want to use the peak feature to change the position of my volume fog and then I want to move into the noise tab and I want to decrease the gain and increase the detail of my fog there in the color tab I can you know add some color to my fog I can add a little bit of sampling 
and slices. All right, so it's looking good. I'm pretty happy. Let's see how what it looks like using a brightness contrast. So this is my uh, this is the volume without my volume fog, and as you can see, it matches pretty pretty well uh, the uh, mood of the image. All right, so uh, what I want to do next is use you know the UV pass. So let's make some space here. Let's say I want to change the uh, texture of this fabric here. So for example, what I can do is, you know, using a simple checkerboard as my texture, I can use the UV pass in conjunction with a cryptomat object to change this clothes texture. Let's do that. All right, so in order to use the cryptomat, I will need a cryptomat fuse, which is again available on Reactor. And all you have to do now is move this locator here. And once you've placed it on top of what you're interested in, all you have to do is to click add and as you can see we now have an alpha channel for that cloth alone okay so what i want to do next is basically uh, use a texture node pipe in the uv pass pipe in my texture let's view the texture node as is as you can see the uv uh, the texture node using the uv pass has mapped my texture all over the place so what I want to do is to use the cryptomat to basically restrict the influence to just that cloth and I can go into the setting tab of the texture node and multiply it by the mask so now I can add a merge node and I can multiply that one on top of everything else so as you can see let me make it a little bit more clear so you better see the result so as you can see I've successfully uh, changed the texture of that cloth let me do something in here in the texture tab I can change the scale here I want it to be square yeah that's it but as you can see for some reason it's not very good looking so as you can see it's a little bit jagged so what I can do in this case uh, is uh, I can fake a uh, super sampling. So what I can do is to use a scale node. I can set the scale to 2 for example and I can change the filter method to something you know uh, higher quality like Catmull ROM and uh, after that I can use a resize node and I can set the resize node to the correct uh, resolution and I can then change again the filter to something higher quality like again Cadmo ROM. So now I can use a simple brightness contrast after the resize node to just basically you know multiply by the mask. So now as you can see we have a vastly better result I can also you know increase these for example to 4 or whatever and get an even better result so yeah okay so what we have left here we do have a depth channel and the mist channel so why do we have two of them so let me show you uh, this is the mist channel and this is the depth channel this appears as white but if you hover the mouse over it as you can see we have values that are over one we can use a auto gain 
to basically automatically normalize those values. And as you can see, the depth and the mist look very similar. The only difference is that the mist channel has anti-aliasing while the depth channel doesn't. At this point, what I want to do is to add uh, some depth of field in post and let's go for the uh, depth blur, which is the one inside of Fusion. And I want to add a uh, another channel booleans and I want to pipe in this doing nothing in the RGBA enable the extra channel and Z buffer is going to be the red foreground so in the depth blur I can then sample the portion of the image that I want to be in focus let's choose the, the blood here <clears throat> I then want to change the scale, the Z scale, to something like 0 0.1 and I want to increase my blur. Let's go for 0 0.2 instead. And as you can see, we have a pretty bad result, I would say. Uh, the box filter is not looking good. Let's try Super Soften. I mean, it's, it's a little bit better, but I I cannot recommend using the depth blur. There are way better options in Fusion. So let me show you a couple of those. One be, would be using the <coughs> fast bulky plugin. You have to pipe in the depth map not as a Z depth, but in the RGB. So right now all you have to do is to increase the blur radi radius and all you have to do is change the focus distance to again select the portion of the image that you want to be in focus and as you can see we have a way better result than before i also want to show you the fresh luft uh, plugin which is uh, a different one i would say this one is uh, even a little bit better in terms of quality but it's a little bit slower so let's have a look at the uh, fresh luft this is uh, the focus point i want to go again uh, here on top of my uh, blood there i want to invert the depth map in this case and i want to increase the radius And as you can see, again, we have uh, an awesome result. So both of those are worth the money they, the money they cost. There's also uh, one more way of doing uh, physically accurate depth, depth of field in, uh, in Fusion. Uh, let me show you that as well. I'm going to keep only the fresh luft here let's uh, bring that down to 10 anyway so okay let me show you these other method and for that I'm going to need an image plane I'm gonna pipe this before the you know before the depth of field so I have my image plane uh, living in the 3d space and I can copy this uh, wireless node, paste an instance so that I keep uh, the link active. And then what I want to do is to add a displace 3D. And I want to displace the image playing using my position pass. In the displace 3D is now set to Luma, which is not what I want. I want it to be set to RGB and I want the mode set to absolute. So as you can see, we have, you know, uh, recreated our 3D scene. But if you look at the wireframe, we're dealing with way too few polygons. So in order to have a good result, what we have to do is to basically 
go into the image plane and crank the subdivision up to 1 for each pixel, so 1920 by 1080. As you can see, we now have a perfectly fine representation of our 3D scene in space. Let's uh, enable the buffer a lot so that you can, you can better see what we're dealing with. Okay, so uh, let me grab uh, this wireless link as well, which is the camera. And I want to pipe that in here so I can use a merge and all I need is a render 3D in the render 3D as you can see I have this uh, weird looking uh, image and the reason is that when rendering let me remove the buffer a lot. When rendering these out in uh, in Blender, Zeek used uh, some kind of fisheye simulation and the only way we were able to uh, work around is by using this ST map. So after the render all I have to do is add a texture node and pipe the ST map in so that I have uh, pretty much exactly the same uh, result as before. Uh, keep in mind that in the render I have to basically uh, remove the uh, anti-aliasing. What's left now is to enable the accumulation effect but before that we have to be uh, sure that in the camera 3D we have you know uh, our focal plane visible it's that green square there and we may want you know to uh, be sure in the 3D space that 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 the focal plane is uh, set where we want it to be. So for example, I want it to be closer right here where the chair with the blood is and I will need to go back right there. Yeah, it seems like it is uh, in the right place. Let's go back to our render and all I have to do in the render 3D is to enable the accumulation effect. It's a little bit too close to the camera so I want to go back into my camera. Yeah, that's perfect. And uh, all I have to do in the render 3D is, you know, uh, change these two values a little bit. I want to uh, decrease the amount of blur and I will surely want to increase the quality. Let's go 128. Right, so as you can see, we have a pretty nice result. This is just uh, a setup that I wanted to show you, but I'd probably prefer using, you know, the fish lift instead, you know? Okay, so let's have a look at the before and after. And as you can see, we have come a long way. Uh, just let me, you know, add a oiden denoiser right around here again and see how it looks at the end yeah let's keep that um, I might want to add a, a little bit of sharpness let's do that in log so I want to add a Cineon log and change from linear to log and add a sharpen node copy this scene on log paste that and go back to linear and i want to change this one to 0.25 or something like that let's have a look at the result yes 
and what else i can add a little bit of uh, fast expo glow just i don't know for the sake of it way too much let's bring that down a lot i would say something like that and yeah i i want just add a touch of film grain make the film grain uh, colored change you know the offset a little bit and decrease the strength all right i think this is pretty much it let's look at the before and after uh all right so i think this is a wrap for me so uh, i'm going to leave a link uh, if you want to support me and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial so please uh, subscribe if you think it's worth it and thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye bye